Hey, welcome to the Small Business Made Simple podcast, brought to you by socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. Being in business is never easy, but it can be simple, or at least simpler. Join me, your host Jen Donovan, every week where we focus on marketing, social media and working towards simplifying your business. You with me? Let's do this. Why, hello there, and welcome to episode 24 of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in again today. I know you have lots of options of podcasts to listen to out there, so I really appreciate you lending me your ears today and listening in to episode 24 of my little podcast. Today, I've got a really special treat for you, and the subject's just a wee bit different to what you'll hear on most podcasts, because we'll actually be discussing off offline marketing and print marketing with my really special friend Tom. So Tom and his better half Ali own and run Same Day Printing out of Melbourne and he's as good at marketing as what he is at printing and it's a seriously valuable podcast to listen into. So can't wait for you to hear from Tom. I've known Tom for what must be about six years now and I'm really proud to call him my friend. What started off as a business friendship via having the same mentor and belonging to the same business group is now a friendship shared over wine and holidays and families because basically I live in God's country and when uh, once a year Tom and Ali make the trip with their boys to come and visit. I know this isn't what the podcast is about today but this is one of the reasons why I really love business business and being in business so much because colleagues become business friends who become great friends and I love that my children see this. I love that my children see that friends just don't come from school. They come from far and wide when you start to venture out into this big wide world. You'll be able to hear that my voice still isn't that terrific. I'm still suffering from the winter lurgy so please forgive my voice in this intro and outro. But of course before we get into today's interview with Tom, we need to do our discovery of the week. This week's discovery is not something that I actually use personally in my business, but I know there's a lot of you out there who will want to know about this and it's called Last Pass. So www.lastpass.com.au, L-A-S-T-P-A-S-S.com, Last Pass. So basically Last Pass remembers all your passwords so you don't have to. So if you're continuing trying to remember passwords that you've done for this or for that, then this could be a real lifesaver for you and just what you've been looking for. As usual, these applications do come with a free version and a paid version, but I think the paid version is something like $3 a month. So for peace of mind, it might be a really small spend. It also really helps generate those really secure, unusual passwords without you having to remember them or retype them. So I think that's one of the great benefits of this last pass. I have one friend who demanded his wife get this due to how many headaches and arguments and heartaches they would be continually having because she consistently forgot her password. I think they're still married, so obviously LastPass is working for them. So if you're the type of person I'm describing here, frustrated and a little bit forgetful, then have a look into LastPass. Of course, as always, just a little disclaimer, my discoveries are just that. I am in no way affiliated with them, but I promise to tell you if I ever am. I just love them. I love what they can give you guys. I Of course, this one isn't one that I use inside my business, but I know there's many listeners out there who will really love LastPass. Of course, and as usual, if you have a little discovery that you would like to share with me, please reach out. I would love to share what you use in your business to make your life a little bit simpler with my audience. But of course, let's get into today's interview with Tom. As mentioned, Tom runs a business called Same Day Printing, um, which is out of Melbourne. But basically, I've got him on the podcast today because I really want to show you what offline 
online marketing looks like and how we just need to be succincting our offline and our online marketing. Now, you might think this is a little bit unusual from a girl who talks online marketing, which I am all for social media and websites and all sorts of different online marketing strategies, as you will well know if you listen to my podcast. But at the end of the day, offline marketing 100% has its place in our marketing mix. And today, the interview is just to plant those few little seeds with you on how offline marketing can work inside your business. So without any further ado, I'm going to introduce Tom and we're going to take the interview away. Okay. So welcome, Tom. Thank you so much for joining me today on the podcast. You are our first male guest on the podcast. So yay, there's a little bit of a sticker for you. Fantastic. Um, You know, I know that you and I have known each other for, you know, a long time, but I think offline marketing and print marketing is something that you know we've never discussed on the podcast. And to be honest, not many podcasts do discuss this. So I'm really happy that you've come online today and having a bit of a chat to us on the podcast. So for those of you who don't know, Tom. Uh, Tom, can you tell us a little bit about yourself um, for our audience? Yeah, g'day, Jen. Uh, well, it's wonderful to be, be the first male guest. <laughs> um, I'm in the world of printing and offline marketing, but predominantly we specialise in digital printing. So I've got a little bit of digital connection here and, you know, with our digital marketing. Um, but prior to actually starting a printing business in 2008, of all times when the GFC was coming along and all that, um, I had a lot more connection with the online world. My better half and, uh, you know, uh, wife and business partner of 26 years, Ali, um, actually built websites. Shout out to Ali. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Ali actually uh, built websites um, for a living. You know, wow. back in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, Drupal, Drupal, all these other things I don't really, you know, are not my area of expertise, um, but hard, harder core coding. Now, we got into print because... A lot of Ali's clients, when she was building websites back then, also wanted, and it's funny how we're coming to full swing now um, of the pendulum, is they wanted Ali to help with their, because she she helped them with their marketing, graphic design as well. Uh, They wanted Ali to help with their um, brochures and business cards and those type of items because they get their website built. So they wanted the other stuff. So there was the reverse connection back then. Mm -hmm. Now, so much so, you know, uh, life goes by and, you know, all sorts of things pop up, kids and, you know, things. So we made a decision to start our own printing business in 2008. Never been printers before. We dealt with printers and I got involved in Ali's business. I come into uh, as part of Ali's uh, business to, originally and then we uh, uh, we changed our, you know, changed the game and changed our direction and we started a printing business in 2008 and specialised in digital printing. And this is sort of where I suppose I start to connect to the online world and digital uh, marketing and databases and that. We primarily got into it to get into what's called personalised marketing or variable data printing, using the power of a database to help you not only cut through but gain traction and engagement uh, with prospects and clients by using the power of the database, how much information you, uh, you know. So before we started this potty, Jen, you know, we, started, we were talking about, um, you know, that we can do so much whiz bang stuff if that's you know it's not exactly a technical term but we can do so much fun stuff with just even a name these days through printing you know putting an putting taking your list of clients or prospects and putting it on a printed piece where the name is their personal name is in on a surfboard it's on number plates it's on the back of a jersey it's across a cupcake you know whatever it might be whoever your target prospect is it's written across their teeth for i don't know if that's a (laughs) a good one or it's tattooed on you know their back um but the more we know about the person the more we can tailor the imagery as well so that's where i'm getting to Um, but we can take their name and we all know we when we see something cross our desk or come in the mailbox or whatever it may be physically and it's got our name on it it's already starting to grab our attention as long as it hasn't got a window envelope on it, you know, they <laughs> to us. we don't open those, but certainly, you know, you send someone a bright pink envelope, you're going to have a hundred percent open rate guarantee because no one gets a pretty pink envelope. These Indeed. Days. So, you know, with a great call to action, you've got yourself a really great marketing piece perhaps, but uh, you know, I've certainly been a massive um, fan of, print media and certainly the businesses that I've built in the past, especially in my retail business, we have a really great mix of both. So I'm a great advocate for it, even though I um, 
I love social media, obviously, and, you know, the whole marketing, but you certainly see my song when you talk about using your database. And I guess that's why one of the reasons why I've got you on today is to talk about, you know, a different way of using your database other than email marketing, you know, taking it offline uh, and getting that engagement, you know, creating, like you said the other, you know, just before, you know, creating that experience, but also building those relationships. So how do you see that um, online marketing marketing and offline marketing as such as print marketing can really work together? Great question, Jen. I mean, it's hard to believe, but the internet or World Wide Web is not everything. You know, we live... We Sorry, call... guys, if you've all just fallen off your chair. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are you ambulances are you going? Or, it you doesn't know. really mean it. No, no, it's a really great... And I think it's something that a lot of people need to hear is exactly that. It isn't yeah. everything. So sorry to cut you off. Keep going. That's all right, Jen. The key is, in inverted commas, you know, not <laughs> everything. Yeah, you know, we all live, play and work offline, you know. Uh, well, at least for the moment, unless you subscribe to, you know, theories like the Matrix or you know, that sort of thing where we might be plugged into something. Um, personally, I don't, you know, thankfully. Um, or, you know, and thankfully we don't live in the, you know, there's another movie I watched with my oldest son recently called Ready Player One where it's a completely VR world. You know, mm -hmm. the whole okay. youth is living in a VR. Gladly, we're not yet, all right? Um, <laughs> Now, how many hours we all spend online is all up, uh, begs the question as well. Don't look at your social media analytics of how much time you flip away on uh, social media. Yeah. But, you know, we're not purely living on uh, online and old school offline marketing. We're going to call it old school at the moment. But what's uh, I think offline is could, could be argued as a new black. Um, you know, it's not as a crowded space as it used to be, which is fantastic opportunity for people. So marketing, offline marketing is still relevant, necessary and can be super effective to grow your business and get your brand out, you know, to your prospects and your, you know, your clients offline. And I so say what are the tips for me, that you say it can be super effective. So what, are, what does that look like? What are those sorts of things that you see? Cause obviously you've had, what's that nearly 11 years in this uh, business now. So what are like, and I suppose it's evolved a lot, but you know, probably more recently, what are the tips and tricks for making it that for making that super engaging? Well, I think there's a number of things, Jenna, we can talk for days about this topic, but, you know, to sort of draw back to basic marketing, you know, it's uh, knowing your ideal prospect or client, you yep. know, you know, knowing what makes them tick, knowing their hot buttons, their pleasure points, pain points, all that sort of jazz, what motivates them, what engages them, um, and what, why they, you know, would like to deal with your product or, and or service. You know, what is it that motivates them to do that? And then starting to, you know, start, what's the, uh, what's the old saying? Start with the end in mind? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's one of my favourites. Yeah, it is. It, but it's an awesome, you know, way to do things. We all like, you know, to receive something that is highly relevant to us, you know. Um, it, it engages us, it captures our attention, but it's, it's relevant to us. You know, so the more we know about uh, the individual person that we're dealing with, the more we can tailor the experience, whether it's online or, or offline these days. Um, but, you know, everything from static packaging or static, you know, uh, brochures and all that still work if you're uh, delivering them to your ideal prospect. You know, if you're, if you're handing out things like cannon fodder at the train station of flyers, majority of it's going to end in the bin, yeah. right? And we don't subscribe to that, you know. I'm, I'm all about, you know, getting a high re return on your investment um, as, as a marketer and, yep. you know, investing in our services and that. And equally, we're all about sustainability. You know, we won't go into the whole, you know, cutting down trees and affecting paper and all that because sustainable forestry and all that is actually a real thing. Yep. Um, but on the flip side is we're not into waste either. You know, at the end of the day, we want you to use, you know, an offline marketing piece, whether it's a flyer, brochure, branzine, pop-up banner, you know, um, marketing cards, books, or whatever it might be, constructively, you know, sustainably, and get a good return on your investment. Um, so to answer your question, you know, you know sort of digress there, but um, to get back to it, the more we know about the individual, the more we can tailor that piece, whatever it may be, to the yeah. recipient. Yeah, and the more chance we've got of engaging that recipient and gaining more traction. Yeah. Does that sort of answer your question, Jen? Yeah, yeah, it is. I guess it's, um, you know, the advice... 
virability is that the word oh. I'm something to make it go viral like you know uh, there's so much out there when people think of you know print media and that and actually you know one of my classic examples is on my computer you can't see it but on my computer i've got this little um thing and it covers my camera so i can sort of cover my camera on my computer or have my camera um active like obviously now so we are recording a podcast but we are actually recording a video at the same time but you know and it's got someone's name on it it's got a, you know a brand on it but it, i don't even know what that brand is so i've seen the concept i've really liked the product enough to use it so it's a bit like that drink bottle thing you know you can print thousands of drink bottles and yes you put your name on them and people take them away but does it ever come back into money and business um you know people then become your client and buy and i guess that is the thing that people see is offline marketing but what we're talking about today is so much more targeted than that it's not necessarily about printing those thousand drink bottles and putting them in show bags and you know to me that's a bit of a it does have its um it, it does have uh its uses for sure uh, but a lot of the time for us small business owners, that, that to me is a bit of a spray and pray yeah. type of concept. So, so what I'm sort of talking about is a lot more targeted, like you're saying, using your database, you know, creating something that is personalised and for them. Yeah. Well, I suppose, Jen, there, there again, you know, I mean, as a mentor of ours in the past, you know, walk two moons and the moccasins, you yeah. know, to understand your, your prospect and your client. Yeah. Um, I mean, there we're starting to talk, you know, what I sort of try to think about is either brand-centric or consumer-centric marketing, right? Mm -hmm. As big business, those thousand water bottles, don't get me wrong, they can be a great tool for brand awareness and staying front of mind, even whether it's not, you know, you're not realising it, but every time you're picking up that water bottle or whatever it might be, there's a touch point there as we talk about in marketing. You know, there's a touch point there that's subliminally, you know, and I won't go into the science behind this because it's not my area of expertise at all. Um, but, you know, we are getting that message, you know, that brand or that logo uh, brought to our front of mind again. But as small business owners, which I believe majority of uh, your listeners are, and majority of the world is, you know, I think 97% of, you know, <laughs> Australian business is small business. Yeah, you know, we've got to be more concerned about consumer centric marketing. We've all got tight budgets. You know, I'm in the print game, but I don't even print stuff every day of the week for my own you know, my own uses. I don't have the capital to reinvest that sort of you know, level of money every day doing my own stuff to send it out, let alone time and all that sort of jazz. Yeah. Um, but we've all got budgets. We've all got marketing budgets. We all want to get a good return on investment. Um, so we need to put our, you know, our money where we believe we're going to get the best bang for buck. All right. But in that note, you know, that's why I said, you know, can get better results, you know, earlier, you know, um, if you do the right homework, you yeah. know, you know, we can all spray and pray, as you said, you know, and that's, that's the old approach. You know, we've all seen that, you know, massive direct mail campaigns, static direct mail campaigns to mailboxes and everything. Like that. And they're still effective, depending on your product, depending on your client, you know, and all that sort of jazz. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, as long as you've got, you know, the budget to do it because there's no silver bullet in marketing. You can't put out one, well, never say never, <laughs> you know, but if, if we want to talk about unicorns and all that, there may be a direct mail campaign out there that, you know, is a one-shot wonder and gets results and then blows everybody away. I'm, I'm, no doubt there's uh, examples in the past, but it's extremely rare. So, yeah. you know, it's the continuity of our marketing as well that makes a big difference and being having smaller budgets we got to make sure that we get our best bang for buck that. And so sort of to back up the track a little bit, you know, the more we've planned our marketing yeah. and that's whether online or offline, you know, and offline is probably more important, you know, to do a lot more planning. I sort of should say that loosely because it's all important, but once you've printed something, you can't take it back or tweak it or change it. It's extremely, you know, extremely difficult to repurpose a printed piece. Mm. Yeah. You can't jump in and online and tweak your landing page or change the EDM, you know, for the next one or that. Once it's printed, so we, we sort of sometimes say if it's not right, it's wrong and it's in the bin and we don't like that. So yeah. it's all about that prior planning. 
you know? Yeah, look, and just, the, you know, absolutely the whole planning thing. And I guess some of the ways that I've seen offline marketing really work really well is it because it is part of that whole marketing strategy. So if I put back my retailer hat that, you know, I was a retailer for quite some years and I look at my retail clients and friends now, like they have a concept that they run over social media. So it might be, you know, a sale or a VIP night or something like that. But so everything's set up over social media and then they have the print side of it. So what you see on social media and the branding that you see and the concept that you see about the sale or about the VIP night, you walk into that store and you see the exact same thing in print. You see it sitting on the counter, you see it hanging from the rafters, you see it, you know, in your letterbox or in the newspaper or wherever that is. So I think that's definitely the way that I see, um, you know, a really great, yeah, you mightn't be able to say, you know, there's a return on investment on that brochure or on that poster. But if it's part of the marketing concept that goes online and offline and it all looks succinct, then that is part of part of your customer's experience. You picked up on the right point, Jen. I mean, it's got to be synergistic. When you're doing cross-media marketing, and that's what you should be engaging, as we sort of talked about at the start, you know, people live online and offline. So you want to have that continuity of experience and engagement from the online marketing channel through to the offline. You know, there's got to be that synergistic relationship in your branding, your marketing, your event message, your offer and everything like that. If they receive something online and they walk in store and get a total different experience, yes. well, you lose that experience. You lose that continuity, you know, and you lose that engagement. What what brought them from online into offline in your bricks and mortar? And equally, vice versa. You know, yeah. if you've sent out a direct mail piece or you've got a banner out there or your vehicles are out there with seasonal marketing on them, you know, advertising and that, and then they walk in the store and the store environment's foreign, you know, um, well, you're not going to have that, you know, the, the, the individual's not going to gain that, you know, experience of oh, this is a yeah, great I guess brand. it's that whole, you know, know, like and trust factors that we talk about so much in marketing and that is part of that experience. You know, if you've got a bricks and mortar, whether or not you're in sales, I mean, sorry, in service-based or retail-based, if you've still got that door that people walk through, it's got to look all the same. You've got to have that, you know, you've got to have your branding all the same. You've got to have the concepts that you're yeah. doing all the same. But, Jen, you don't even have to have bricks and mortar, you know, for those people out in vehicles and service vehicles. True, you know, true. Massive opportunity, you know, to ensure that when, you know, you rock up on site or deliver or whatever it is, again, that experience. I mean, that's where, you know, we've got to take a leaf out of all the big players in the game with their branded vehicles, whether it's UPS, FedEx, you know, Coles, Woolies, all the, you know, anyone else who's out there using vehicles to, to continue their brand um, experience. Um, the little, you know, the beautiful thing about print, but especially now the evolution of digital printing, is you don't have to have a massive budget to actually look good, you know, across your apparel, your vehicles, your building signage, your in-store signage, you know, um, flyers and brochures and all that. You can start off small and you can change it, change it up as your brand changes. But let's just continue that conversation on there's a lot of clients now who live have businesses on in the online world and they drop ship or they send things out so they don't necessarily have a bricks and mortar store they mm-hmm. might have a warehouse or they're sending out of another third party you can start to look at your branding on your packaging and before we even go into custom boxes and custom packaging and you know having that whole apple experience and all that which is let's be honest it was a wonderful thing. I don't know if it's become it's a little bit old. Level. That's next level. It's next level, you know. But when we all started getting those little uh, white boxes, you know, with the whole, you know, the way it opened and the whole experience, it was wonderful. And that was them continuing their brand experience. You know? yeah. yeah. Whether you like Apple and iPhone or not, you know, the whole marketing side of things is awesome. And I'm, I've got iPhones, but uh, but I mean the product, the packaging, you know, everything like yeah. that. And I, and I guess for my clients and, you know, uh, for people that I sort of see and talk to, we talk about the fact that when you get something like that, that beautiful packaging, that's when you should take that online. You know, the whole opening, the, you know, yeah. those Instagram stories. The unboxing. Stories, the unboxing. <laughs> like, they are so popular. So, you know, and that's part of the concept of taking your – 
I, you know, imagine if you, um, you know, our listeners, you know, did something, a concept like that. So, you know, the packaging that they sent and then their clients do the, you know, unboxing. So again, your offline marketing has now been taken online. Yeah. So just, these well, That's where you get that viral nature, Jen. Together. Oh, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. I know when we had, uh, you know, our, um, our retail store, we used to print cooking books, yep. uh, you know, every, uh, I think we used to print two, um, two a year and they had virability. People yes. literally, you know, we, you know, we only printed a hundred of them or something like that, but they became things that people wanted. They were our free gift with purchase and this and that. So again, you know, it became that viral thing and people yeah when they missed out and we didn't reprint for that particular reason you know then they could download it online so yep. yeah and that's where i mean we can talk about conversations of converting you know giveaways into then brand merchandise where you know you might have had x amount of books that you gave away but then after that they were available for purchasing online you know, yeah. and you start to, you know, you create that next, uh, you know, and we're digressing again here, but you know, create another channel of revenue, you know. Yes, so. yeah, I guess for us in the, the cookbooks, there was a bit of a copyright thing that, uh, you know, <laughs> you can't. Well, let's not go into that. <laughs> no? I, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, I spent many years in law, a little bit in uh, copyright <laughs> law, but, uh, you know, there's something about giving something away for free, uh, not sure yes. where it came from, as opposed to selling it online and being slapped with some copyright. So for those of you listening out there, just be really aware of, you know, the copyright laws and things like oh, 100%, 100%. that. 100%, 100%. Yeah. And we deal with that every day, Jen, in our game where yes. we have people coming through to print things and we've got to sort of knock it on the head, you know, um, you know, unless they're coming from uh, design agencies or, you know, credible sources, some of them you're going, look, uh, I'm just going to actually say that that one we, we're not prepared to print for you. You might want to check on the legalities of that one. Yes. Uh, but look, even packaging, as I was saying, you know, branded packaging, you know, it doesn't ha you don't have to have your own custom printed box because that takes a bit of investment, you know, yeah. and you, people will graduate to that, you know, um, and we encourage you. We've had many clients graduate from us because we deal with short run, quick turnaround stuff. Uh, they graduate to printers that offer those solutions and can provide a more cost-effective solution when you're getting into larger runs and volumes. And, like, and we've had plenty of clients graduate from us over the years. And we're quite, you know, we're sorry to see them go, but it's quite exciting being part of their journey. But I'll give you an example of one, you know, who just started with stickers. Now, Pod and Parcel, they were actually on Shark Tank. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, check them out. You wanted to hear about of a good story. We started with Ben and Jai right from the get go when they printed. I think it was it was only like about three hundred labels with us to put on their you know coffee satchels um, to stick on, and they were doing them at home. Actually, they both worked full time at the same time, and they were doing it at night. Anyway, I'll keep going. They <laughs> then graduated, and we were doing thousands of labels for them every month. Yeah, and to, so much so about probably fourteen months beforehand, I started to have the conversation with them that they needed to graduate from us. You know, yeah. they could get better bang for their buck um, with uh, another solution provider. Um, but at the time, no one else was as fast as us because they'd ring us up, you know, the day before sometimes to get. You know, they had a sudden influx of orders come through from online. You know. Yeah that they then had to get out the next day or within a short yeah. period of time. And with a name like Same Day Printing, it tends to be what we try to provide. And I can't <laughs> say we can write, we don't cash all checks that people want us to cash, you know. Uh, we do turn away some work, but we certainly don't turn away if we can help. But where I'm going with this, they graduated from that. Now they do their own custom boxes, custom satchels, and, um, you know, and they've just gone, gone, gone next level. Yeah, you know, so they knew from the start that they had to invest in some branding for uh, themselves and they started small and then as the revenue come and, you know, the orders come and they grew, they they grew with it, which I think is just such an awesome concept and, you know, so good for us small business owners to hear is, you know, we don't need to do runs of thousands and thousands yeah. of out, you know, 12k or something like that we can start these things small we can you know and test and measure i'm such an advocate oh. for test and measure do a short run test did it work no it didn't okay was it what i printed or was it the people i sent it to you know and do another short run and you know work those things out for yourself and, and always testing always measuring these mm. concepts of online marketing you know that they, they were born in offline marketing we've yes, just forgotten correct. about it yeah. Look, another example was Gail from uh, Mineral Mud Soap. Um, Gail came to us, I don't know, two, maybe three years ago. Um, she's got a great Instagram following. Yeah. 
um, build a home business, makes extraordinary looking soaps, you know, but uh, I've got a good Instagram follow. But she, she, Gail started off printing things at home on her home printer, cutting them out, wrapping them around her, you know, soaps and everything like that. Then uh, went started to go to Office Works and started printing their things there. Then when she found us, at one stage, I think she was hand cutting 10,000 labels, you know, paper <laughs> labels. And uh, these are little thin things. And, oh, and I don't, I'm sure Gail won't mind me saying this, but she said, you know, when we started, she, well, she found us, we helped her with the last minute opportunity. She asked other things and we started helping other areas. And then, you know, we talked about her, uh, her product sleeves or product belly bands around her soaps. And, you know, we not only gave her a more cost-effective solution, we changed her life in the respect of we gave her back time. You know, she wasn't sitting around the kitchen table cutting up, you know, literally cutting up little hand labels from A4 sheets. Yeah. You know, we provided a proper product sleeve, commercially printed, you know, professionally printed, and it not only just lifted the level of her presentation of her products, it changed her life from giving her time back and allowed her to invest in other areas of her life and business. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so there's other things there. Yeah, and certainly I think that's a concept that us small business owners forget. And I was only talking about it um, just last night in my uh, business development group that I have is, you know, your time is worth something as well. So we're actually talking about creative market, which I think was my little discovery on episode 20. I'll have to double check that. Um and creative market. So it was about buying, um, you know, templates and things like that. Like, yes, yep. you had to buy them. But for instance, I bought one, $35. I work for more than $35 an hour. Like yeah. I made a 52 page document out of this template that I bought. It would have cost, it would have, you know, taken me hours and hours to make this 52 page document uh, and it still did take me hours but all the design yeah. work was done for me so sometimes you've got to think about you know um yes it does cost money to get print done uh, but if it's something you're already like this lady the soap lady was hand cutting them her her time is valuable as well yeah. and, you know, it didn't make it cost effective even though it appeared that it did but i mean let's go back to packaging you know you're asking about opportunities you know Apart from a simple, a simple sticker on a box, what I see a lot of small businesses missing, you know, an opportunity and what, are, what we call opportunity cost is putting some collateral within the packaging, you know, a marketing card, a flight, a cross sell, upsell, you know, encourage return or even, you know, one I received the other day, which was fantastic from a product I bought, it, the whole flyer was just about join them online. Here's our Instagram. Here's our Facebook. You know, we encourage you to come online, learn more about your product, learn from other users. You know, it was a it was a barbecue uh, barbecuing tool. You know, um, but they they're driving people offline online by putting extra collateral. You know, which hasn't cost them a lot. A little A five flyer. You know, encouraging people, you know, their customers to go online. Other ones I've seen where you know uh, customers have put out um, not just cross promotional, but um, you know referral offers. So they'll put an offer in for the recipient who's purchased something mm -hmm. and then they'll put an extra card in to hand to a friend. Ah, you know? that's perfect. That's beautiful. I love that. I'm actually just going to, I know this is a podcast, you won't be able to see it, but I will put it online. This is the little brochure that I got in my packaging um, that's come from Same Day Printing when they did my most amazing new business card. So I'll put a screenshot of that inside my Instagram stories as this uh, podcast goes live as well. So Tom, what, you know, thank you so much for coming on today. I really wanted people to get the idea of, you know, all these marketing strategies that we talk about online, 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 they all relate to offline and it's such a perfect synergy between the two. And I think it's something that people, you know, think about, I've got to get a business card printed and I've got to get a brochure printed, but they don't necessarily go the next level and think, okay, how can I make offline marketing and print marketing part of my whole marketing strategy when it comes to, you know, running an event or, you know, day-to-day -day business or whatever that might look like. So I think we've given um, my audience and my listeners some really great tips and tricks on how they need to be thinking outside the square Can I leave some last things jen yeah i yep go for I mean, it uh, when it comes to your offline online and offline but form and function all right so that little piece you held up before is a pretty simple piece it's a die cut piece but there's not you know a lot to it but it becomes more tactile because we've changed the shape you yeah. know 
So it's not just the content on it. The content is king. Don't let's not get that wrong. You know, the calls to action and the offers and the content and all that. Making it look pretty, making it look good, you know, is important. But the wonderful thing about print is we can engage more senses, you know, and offline. They make it a tactile experience. And we can even add a smell and a scent, you know. Uh, scratch and sniff hasn't gone away, you know. Um, not on that one, but I can send you some <laughs> pineapples we did recently that, uh, how do you like them apples, that uh, smell like pina colada. Oh, uh, wow. I used to love scratch and sniff when I was good at primary school and I used to get one on my book. Oh, yeah. So that's what I'm saying about what is old is new again, you know, and it's not about either, you know, solution like I've got to do online or offline. It's not about that. It's no. and online and offline engage the multiple opportunities and experiences that you can have with your prospects and clients and think about, you know, when you're creating that, uh, that, offline marketing piece how you can make it more engaging you know so not just from content but things like how do i make it more tactile so you i think you mentioned it or i don't know if we got it on the podcast it was our early conversation about lumpy mail you know i know we started talking about envelopes but you know you can start to get into lumpy mail you know but it's more for those of you who aren't sure lumpy mail is exactly what it sounds like it is a lump in a in an envelope so when people get it their curiosity will kill the cat they will open it it will be 100 percent open rate because i'll be like what's this lump not only that once it's opened can i talk about just a one last quick one sure all right so michael from chameleons you know he's a uh, his airplane <laughs> yeah, correct. You know, Michael approached me, I think it was early last year, about a concept about a lumpy mail piece because he was all into the, you know, uh, the, the uh, you know, he understands the advantages. Now, Michael does high-end leadership coaching, everything like that, comes from uh, uh, an Air Force background, you know, and he said to me, he goes, you know, what do you think about a balsa wood plane that you have to ass- assemble that we send it out? And I said, that's, that's banging, that's cracking uh, idea. You're sending out to a... You know, he's, he's sending it out to CEOs, GM, GMs and everything like that. And it's on target, you know. Not only ha- have to assemble it, so his leadership courses are about, you know, getting the best out of your team, building your team, you know, assembling your team, you know, and, and that constant, you know, development. Um, so building this balsa wood plane sort of starts to try, tie in to what mm-hmm. Michael does. Not only that, it's just fun, yeah. You know, at the end of it, who doesn't like to, you know, throw a paper plate or, a, you know, because it yeah. was going to fly, you yeah. know, have a bit of fun around the office. You know, yeah, I think make that CEO or that GM take five minutes out of their day to put a smile on their dial while they do something. Absolutely. Shout out to Michael. He's an awesome um, leadership coach, but also just such an awesome guy yeah. as well. I think one last thing, Jen, is you asked earlier in the piece, is you can measure offline marketing, you know, um, and, and that's important. I'm bringing that up here is because at the end of the day, any marketing campaign we do, whether online or offline, and I, I'll take away the word or because you should online and offline, is we've got to put those, uh, uh, those measurements in there, those key metrics, whether it's uh, custom codes, custom URLs, unique phone numbers, you know, whatever it may be, um, there's opportunity to test and measure and, you know, remeasure and look at the analytics you know, and change things up. And the beautiful thing about digital printing these days and short run printing is you can change up. You can do a short run of something, you know, and then as you want to evolve and, you know, change the the, the, the message or the marketing or the offer and that, you know, the next run, easy as, you know. Yeah. Perfect. So, Tom, you know, if somebody has heard something that, you know, has tweaked their interest today or, you know, liked the idea of doing some print marketing, um, how can they get in contact with you? Right. First and foremost, you can pick up the phone. We're still old school. We've still got a uh, phone that people can read. Yeah, well. All right. So, um, 1300 um, or 8361 with a 03 for those in uh, Australia. Um, but you can also jump on our Instagram at Same Day Printing. We, uh, we've got the, the, the hashtag Same Day Printing on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, you can jump on our chat line on our website at www.samedayprinting.com.au. Have a chat with the team there. Or you can send an email to helpme at samedayprinting.com.au. And one of our team will certainly be willing to give a hand. And you may even hear from myself. <laughs> <laughs>
Wow, that'd be awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Tom. I think you've given people some really um, some strong ideas to think about and really hopefully have got my audience start thinking about, you know, how can offline marketing, uh, you know, help me with my online marketing campaigns because I'm just such a true believer and that's one of the reasons why I got you on this podcast is because they just work perfectly together. It's like a marriage made in heaven. So I encourage you all to start thinking about, you know, what what does your print marketing media look like? Thanks again, Tom, for coming on. That's awesome. Catch you later. Thank you, Jen. They're great to be the first bloke on the show too. So how was that? I hope you really enjoyed that interview with Tom and can really start seeing some ways that the power of print can work inside your business. Or perhaps I've just set you on the thought process of how can print work inside your business. If you'd like to chat about it further, well, let's get social on social and head into my Facebook group, Like Minded Business Owners, and have a little bit of a chat about it there. I'd love to hear your thoughts around print, um, perhaps what you've done in the past or what you might be thinking of that you you could do in the future. But that's all for episode 24 of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. I will be back next Thursday with a less croaky voice, I'm hoping, and definitely with some more marketing know-how and another great discovery. If you're enjoying this podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode and maybe even share it with a friend. And if you've got five minutes or even three please uh, head over and leave me a rating and a review because those things are like gold for podcasters like me. And if you'd like to get a shout out on the podcast, then make sure you leave your name and your business name when you're doing your review. And I will be sure to mention you on our, on my podcast as well. So my small business owners, stay on your game. Keep going with your dreams because the world needs that really special gift that only you have to share with us all. Thank you so much for lending me your ears. And remember, as my opening song says, there's no point in dreaming small. small